Jose Dominguez, say hello. Buenas tardes, amigos del Condado de Wilson, amantes de de libertad y justicia. That means hello, Wilson County, lovers of liberty and justice. I'm glad to be here. Joe, if you would, to start with, could you share with us when and where you were born? I was born on the eastern part of Cuba. Uh, that over there near, uh, well, in the middle of the island up there, uh, the eastern province uh, near Guantanamo, you know, you heard of Gitmo? Well, Gitmo was a few miles south of where I was, and uh, that's where I was born. I was born in the year 1935, and uh, I was, uh, well, I was uh, uh, presented here as a refugee, well, uh, I am familiar with a lot of refugees. I was one of the fortunate ones. I came here through a legal uh, matter. We went through the consulate. We went through all our paperwork and all the red tape that is needed to come to this country here. Woo! We went through that. First it was my dad. He came here a year before. His mother was born and raised in New York, so he was, he, he was out of American blood, so he wouldn't be here. So he brought his family. And we came a year later. My God, thank God for the USA. I have an experience, I have an experience that, that uh, with the refugees that started really in 1959, when old Fidel showed up. My gosh, you know, people protected him and they thought he was the liberator. People in Cuba used to have signs like this. Fidel, this is your house. Guess what? He took it. He took all the houses, took the whole thing. But anyway, after a while, uh, you know, it's a long story. But this lady before me here, what an awesome speech she made. Byron Perry, awesome. Now, you got to know your, your history. I knew, I know the history of two countries. First Cuba, because I came here at 14. I had to learn a whole brand new history here. So I knew that those two countries, but I did see what was happening in Cuba. Cuba, Fidel started taking the country by force by the point of the gun. When he got into power, he disarmed the country. Then he started going to the schools and indoctrinating the little children. Do you know any little children who's been indoctrinated? Mm -hmm -hmm. Nowadays, be careful. Be aware that you get bit by the snake. And it's not the one that falls on this flag over here. The one that crawls on the ground that it sneaks upon you. Now, I gave, I gave an oath to this. Three times I've given an oath since I've been here in my short 74 years. The first one was when I resigned my, my citizenship in Cuba and accepted to become a U.S. citizen. I raised my right hand and I became, I became an American, not a hyphenated American. I was an American, no longer Cuban American, no longer Afro-American, Mexican American. Who invented that? Socialism invented that. Separate people, keep them separate. That's what it is, but I'm an American. The second oath that I accepted was to defend the Constitution of the United States as I joined the, the, the Air Force to defend it against do, uh, domestic and foreign enemies. Guess what? Those are still in force, guys, you know? And so we need to go and defend our Constitution, our Constitution right. Make sure that you are going to vote for the right person that is going to stand up for you, for liberty and for freedom. For the freedom, not the one that just handled a little fry, but actually the liberty that comes with justice, the liberty that comes from our God, the one that is in the Constitution, the liberty and justice for all. That's the one. There you go. That's where you go. So, I don't know if I've given you a, a little background, but uh, I was a little raised here. Remember the, remember the show Happy Days with Hans? Yes. <laughs> That's my, I grew up in that. So I, I can't relate a lot to what was going on in Cuba, except that a lot of my, my uh, uh, cousins and all that, I heard all the horrible stories. Some of those were fortunate enough to leave, others did not, but anyway, Thank God for the USA. Let me tell you what, this is a great country. And off the, 
of the coast of this United States, there is a cancer that it was spreading, and now it's going down into Venezuela. Those people are a bunch of liars from the pits of hell. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they are. They're, they're, they're giving all these great and wonderful social things, but in the end of it, it's death and, and, and poverty. And just to, to ruin it. My former country was fine. There was dancing, music everywhere. What a ball. Today, it's like a cemetery. You know, there's no life there. Anyway, that, uh, <laughs> I can get going on and on. I don't want to give you a history lesson. <laughs> well, Joe, thank you very much. We're not done. Oh. <laughs> Joe, how, how do you see the political climate? Um, how it compares to where it was just prior to Castro in Cuba and, and where we are in America today. Is there any similarities whatsoever? You know, talk about that if you would a minute. Okay, Cuba, Cuba was a republic. It's known as the Republic of Cuba. Cuba had fought a, a war, a miserable war against Spain for 10 years. Then after the main, the U.S. got in there, kicked the Spanish out, and Cuba became a republic. The government there was formalist like here, had three chambers, the, the uh, of, of government, the executive, the, the, uh, the judicial, <laughs> and the other branch. Now all this government, they all went through political uh, things just like we're doing here. There were politicians that would come and they would speak. And so people went to the polls and they voted and they, they elected president, they elected congressmen, and there were laws made and there was the constitution. I can't quote it because I don't remember it. But anyway, Fidel took the Constitution and uh, I guess he made a paper airplane or and threw it out because that was the end of it. Uh, but there is a, that country, being a republic, we're a republic in this country.